everyone and welcome to the Botanus Garden Club. I'm Pam and I'm Wendy and welcome to today's show all mm. about fragrance. Yes, fragrance. We've had so many, well, quite a few requests from uh, Garden Club viewers saying, hey, you guys should do a show about fragrance Strictly flowers. Strictly fragrance. Strictly yeah. fragrance. Now, we've talked about fragrance on other shows, but I don't think we've ever actually done a show Not just a about one. fragrant flowers. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. So here we go. Here it is for all those people out there who wanted to see this. Yeah. <laughs> the, I think what's really cool about fragrant and fragrance in the garden, fragrant flowers and fragrance in the garden, mm -hmm. is that it evokes so many emotions. Mm -hmm. For me, I go right back to my childhood when yeah. I smell certain things. Yes. And I think you said that the fragrance mm -hmm. factor, the fragrance sense, yes. is one of the strongest yes. when it comes to memories. Absolutely. I mean, we all have okay. that. Uh, you know, things that will remind you of a time in your life yeah. simply mm -hmm. by smelling something and I think that's really wonderful because as Wendy said you can evoke memories of your childhood uh, perhaps in a grandmother's garden mm -hmm. or your mom's garden right. and you can certainly create new memories for yourself and for your family your grandkids or whoever your own yes. children in your own garden and it's so easy to do because gosh there's just so there many is plants all to season choose from. long as mm -hmm. well, which is really great. And when you actually attract people to your garden with fragrance, mm -hmm. you attract the bees and the yes. insects to your garden. Yes, fragrance does that. Which yes, I think it's, great. it's one of the ways that the plants say, "Hey, come on, <laughs> check me out." You know, I'm not only a good-looking flower, but I also smell nice too. Yes, come and, and pollinate. Yes, come and pollinate. So it has that added factor of attracting those beneficial insects to your garden, mm -hmm. which of course only makes your garden that much more fragrant and floriferous and all the good things. And yesterday I was super reminded of how springtime is a very fragrant time in the garden. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you never even think about it until it actually hits you and assaults your senses. Yeah. And to me, it is very calming. When mm -hmm. I went out yesterday morning, for yeah. the first time, mm -hmm. I actually smelled spring. Mm -hmm. And it's that fresh sort of um, fragrant, sometimes woodsy, but yes. sometimes floral notes in there mm -hmm. as well. And it's just, it just takes all the tension away. I realize winter yeah. is almost done. Yes. And now we're in for a real treat. Right. And when we talk fragrance, there are so many different varying degrees of fragrance. Some flowers are extremely fragrant and very strong, obviously. Mm -hmm. Other ones are very lightly fragrant. And then you've got different types of fragrance, exactly. just like perfumes. Mm -hmm. They're spicy mm -hmm. and they're sweet. And then there are really floral, yes. citrusy notes. Yeah. Oh, my favorite is the spicy ones, though. I've got to say, when, mm -hmm. I, when I smell that in a Almost like a little or... bit of a peppery smell. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And it's easy enough as well to find out which plants that Botanus carries that are fragrant, because, of course, we mark them clearly in our catalog with a little flower mm -hmm. icon. And easy online. To spot. Yes, and online. Plus, you can do a search. Mm -hmm. online. We have the advanced search section and you just click on that and ha highlight fragrance and you will see all the wonderful fragrant flowers we have to offer each season. Right. Yeah. And I guess the whole reason for this show today is to let you know of course that there's lots of different fragrant varieties to choose from but if you plan it correctly you can have fragrance not only in the yeah. early part of the season but all the way through the summer and into the fall mm -hmm. if you choose the correct plants. Exactly. And I I thought I would go with peonies because mm -hmm. they totally bring me back to my childhood. Right. My mom loved them mm -hmm. and there's a couple of really good reasons for peonies. They've got a sort of a fruity fragrance. Some are, are sweet mm -hmm. but they will last a lifetime in your garden like yeah. 50 years. Yeah. The and they're one of the earlier bloomers. Absolutely. So it's early in the mm -hmm. season. The fragrance uh, of them is wonderful and depending on the variety you can get different fragrances. Mm -hmm. I chose Celebrity Peony because I just yeah. love the the nature of it. It's got sort of the cup and then inside that cup of it's big petals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just tons, filled. like a bad hair day kind of thing. Yeah, but just so good. Tons and tons <laughs> of petals. And I did an experiment one day. I had Celebrity growing probably about two or three years ago and I have a, the flower came into the house and mm -hmm. I had it in a little vase yeah. and I thought that's really lovely. I could smell the fragrance and then I left it until the actual little petals inside dropped mm. and I had no idea that that's what the fragrant part oh. was sort of over, it was on the petals. Oh, so I brought yes. them in and I put them in a little bowl until mm -hmm. they dried up and the fragrance was still there. Yeah, yeah. Talk about bang for your buck. Totally. And it is a, one of the more subtle fragrances. Yes. It's not an overwhelmingly strong fragrance. You want to get um, close in order to get yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I think it's kind of perfect for people who may be, you know, sort of a, have an aversion to strong fragrances. Mm -hmm. You could have right. that in the garden and you would just know about it until you got, uh, when you got close to yeah. it. Yeah. 
Now, if you're unsure on how to plant a peony, because they do have a very specific way that they need yes. to be planted at a certain depth, you need to choose your spot well and so on. But we did an episode earlier on yeah, sure in our days <laughs> when we looked much younger. <laughs> and that's episode 17. Exactly. And it's all about planting a peony. It's one of our most popular episodes. It's been viewed many, many times. And it's well worth viewing again if you're new to planting peonies or if you just want a little bit of a refresher on how to do yeah. it. It's very well done and I think it would answer all the questions that you would have in regards to, you know, how do I go about getting the most out of my peony? Exactly. When they are, when they're in your garden for that long a period of time, you want to make sure you put them in so you get the very, very best show out of them. Right off the bat, don't yeah. want to move them after that. That's true. Yeah. So now, what do you have in mind? Well, I'm going to move a little further into the season and I've chosen an oriental trumpet lily called Beverly's Dream. Oh, and I must say, Beverly must have really awesome dreams because <laughs> this flower is so yes. pretty. It's, you know, it's got red and white and yellow. The blooms are quite large. Yeah. And as we know from oriental trumpets, which are a, a hybrid of oriental lilies and trumpet lilies, they grow very tall. Sometimes they're referred to as tree peonies. Or tree um, lilies. Or tree lilies, not yes. tree peonies. Sorry, I'm <laughs> still thinking about the peonies. <laughs> tree lilies, because they do grow quite tall sometimes yeah. upwards of six feet oh, yeah. uh, in your garden and the flowers are huge and very fragrant oh, now yeah. this Those is when we're talking spices. yeah this is your spicy yeah. super fragrant yeah. and when you plant that as a focal point in your garden you don't even have to come close in order when it's in full bloom you're going to notice it it is going to smell yes. so wonderful and I love to when you first get them you'll notice they don't get as big as the we talk about mm -hmm. the very first season it right. takes them a little while to kind yeah. of build up to that height yeah but if you put them in an area where they are sort of the backdrop the, or even the centerpiece yes. and build around them, yeah. you will love it because yeah. they just shoot up mm -hmm. and the color and the fragrance of them will make them a real focal point in the mm -hmm. garden. They love a super sunny spot, mm -hmm. obviously well draining bulb as, as with any a flower bulb. They like a nice well draining soil. They're hardy. Uh, three, zones three to five with mulch, six to eight. Mm -hmm. You right. just have to put them in the ground. Usually about six to eight inches yeah. deep. That's a good point too. If you plant mm -hmm. them six to eight inches deep, eight being sort of the deeper, yeah. it, you'll find that they actually stand a lot better. I've yeah. never had to stake mm -hmm. a lily, and especially an OT lily. I've no, never had to. No, because the stems so are so very, exactly. very strong. Go a little deeper and that helps out as well. Yeah. And if you want to take them inside, truthfully, you probably only need about one bloom uh, <laughs> because they are so very fragrant. But mm -hmm. gosh, as I said, that Beverly's Dream, what a great dream that is. I mean, it is such a pretty, unique flower. So give that one a try if you haven't already got it in your garden. Good job, I love that one, good choice. And I thought I would do a Phlox, and I chose Phlox Bright Eyes because those are just a slightly later in the season bloomer. Mm -hmm. I love them too because they actually produce a really lovely green foliage, mm -hmm. and it starts early, stays late, then you have that flower that blooms. Yeah. And again, that perfume is slightly sweeter. It's like mm -hmm. a little candy store in yeah. your garden. Mm -hmm. And the Bright Eyes is a soft pink with a really mm -hmm. deep pink center. Yeah, it kind of looks like bubble gum. It does, mm -hmm. it's like having a little candy in your garden yeah. for sure. And they bloom a little bit later too than the lilies and sort of the peonies to begin with. Right. So it's sort of bridging that gap right. in the summertime that you might want to have a little more color and a little fragrance in the mm -hmm. garden. Mm -hmm. And I know you have to give them a little room because they do like to have a good air circulation. Yeah. The newer varieties now are just so hardy and mm -hmm. they are not susceptible to any of the things the sort of original phloxes mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. But you still want to give them some room. They, they do appreciate that. Yeah. And they'll be in your garden. Gosh, I've got bright eyes that's been in my garden probably for 10 years mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And th so this, they don't mind, yeah. they don't like Fuss, must, yeah. they just grow anywhere in a full sun location. Exactly. Love them. Super easy. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're growing through the season and now to finish up in the fall, we want something fragrant. And that is sometimes a little difficult to find because usually it's the summertime yeah, when you've got true. all the fragrant flowers. But again, I get to talk about <laughs> one of my all time favorite flowers. And if you've been watching the Botanist Garden Club for a number of years, you know what I'm going to be mentioning. And that is the 
Asadanthra. Mm -hmm. Okay, seriously. The Asadanthra. I, I think every gardener across Canada should grow Asadanthra because they are one, late bloomers, yes. which is which is nice, which is beautiful to extend the season. Two, super easy to grow. Three, the fragrance. Now, yeah. this fragrance is just mm -hmm. oh, it's heavenly. It's just it's, it's one of my uh, favorite fragrances to smell. Kind of like, you know, baby powder and suntan yes. lotion and it, the flower too. And the flower oh. is so pretty. It's white. It looks like a little orchid yeah. with a purple center, white yeah. with a purple center. But they're not small. I mean, those flowers, yeah. when they come out, they can get to be quite large. Yes. And they're just beautiful. And there's multiple flowers on mm -hmm. one stem. And it's a very surprising flower because what will happen is you'll get lots of uh, blade-like yes. foliage, mm -hmm. or you know, sort of grass-like foliage, like a gladiola. Um, and that will be there for, you know, in sort of into the oh, summertime. Forever. And forever. you'll be thinking, mm, when is this flower going to bloom? It's just, you know, <laughs> I just got green stuff. And then almost like overnight, you'll yes. go out and whoop. There all of these are. beautiful and it continually blooms that's the great mm -hmm. it's sort of like a like a daylily there'll be one that'll come up it'll die off and then the next ones will flower and as we said of course that fragrance is going to draw you right in now it's not overpowering no it's not you have to get close to it but it's worth having a nice mm -hmm. bunch of them yeah. elka planted a planter of them or a container of them last season mm -hmm. and there must have been 20 or 25 in the container and they all shot up and they, they don't need much room you can mm -hmm. plant them really close together right. and we put it in the full sun by the picnic table mm -hmm. oh my gosh yeah it was just stunning, mm -hmm. absolutely stunning. So yes. we recommend those, and container gardening is yes. in that particular case, yeah. especially lovely. So now we've filled in the whole season, and mm -hmm. we hope that uh, you know you'll be able to do that as well. Because if you are a lover of fragrance, you'll definitely want to be having beautiful scents yeah. all summer long and into the fall. And we've only chosen four, and believe you me, there are plenty more mm -hmm. online. So feel free to go through and search that advanced search engine for the fragrant flowers and right. choose even more than what we've shown you today. Exactly. And of course, that brings us yes. to the fun part of the show where we give something away and we ask you a question. Now, this week's question is, Wendy, what is your favorite fragrant flower? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's one that we mentioned. I know. Could maybe it you can, be? Maybe you can give us an idea for future catalogs. Yes. We always love that. We love to get ideas about fragrant things especially. For sure. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, send your answer by email to Garden Club at Botanus.com mm. and we are going to draw two very lucky winners. I consider them extremely lucky yes. <clears throat> because they are going to be getting some Acidanthra. Oh. Two packages. Two yes. people are going to get one package each. And that's worth sending an email to us for sure. Absolutely, <laughs> because as you know, it's my favorite flower, if I haven't said that five <laughs> times out already. <laughs> Find out why. And if you've already grown it, then you'll be thrilled to get them because mm -hmm. they simply are wonderful. And as we move into the spring season, it's true. It's all yes. about the flowers. It's all about the fragrance. And uh, I hope that you're enjoying a beautiful spring season wherever you are in Canada or around the world. And we love to hear from you. We love to see your pictures. So oh, make yeah. sure you do send some to us. We That'd would really nice. love that. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.